just begun the journey of rebuilding this extra crispy Dodge Demon, and already it's been a story of highs and lows. The minute I got this Demon back to the shop, I found this. In this. In this. At this point, I've paid nearly $20,000 for a car that's worth about three, right? Well, not quite, because despite... Dude, that's gallons. The engine's actually in fantastic shape. Okay, so maybe fantastic is a bit of a reach, but the block, the crank, the cam, even the supercharger, they all survived to power this demon once more. Now that the engine build's underway, we have to make a decision on the chassis. Do we fix it or do we replace it? Logic says we take this demon and send it to the scrapyard. I even bought the perfect donor car, a $2,000 Hellcat Red Eye. But this is where things get complicated. This Red Eye chassis, it's beautiful. It's burned, but not burned burned. Truthfully, it's just way too nice to cut up for the parts we need for the Demon, which of course is pretty much everything. Great, problem solved. We'll use this red eye chassis for the project, right? Yeah, about that. I'm just not ready to give up on the Demon yet. It's too special and too rare. So that leaves us with a couple options. Numero uno, I don't think we're gonna do that one. Option number two, throw that one in the trash. That brings us to option three. Fix the demon, fix the red eye, narrowly avoid bankruptcy. Why you like this? Terrible idea? I suppose you could have said that if I didn't just buy one more Hellcat. Unlike the red eye, I have no problem cutting this car out. There is one more thing. This one has everything we need to manual swap the demon. That's right, I bought not one, not two, but three of these things. We have the donor, we of course have the demon, and then we have the future project slash backup chassis if things go south with the demon, which I would not doubt. We got such a smoking deal on this red eye. No pun intended whatsoever, but first things first, we need to get it into the other unit before the hood ends up somewhere over there. No seats? Uh, it was two grand. I mean, you can't ask for too much oh, for Oh, man. I thought you said you got another complete car to get the other one done. Complete-ish. Is it or is it not more complete than the Demon? Well, it is, yeah, I give you that, but okay. It's not complete, but it has way more than $2,000 in parts in it. Not to mention, when I was told this was a fire car, I expected it to be in similar condition to the Demon. Well, spoiler alert, it's way better than the Demon. In fact, I can't bring myself to cut it up. This is such an easy fix that I just don't want to do it. Somehow, some way, the car doesn't even smell like smoke. This red eyes realistically some front end body panels, a windshield, and some missing interior parts away from being a complete car. Well, I suppose there is the issue of the drivetrain. It does have a drivetrain, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use it. And that's because one of you guys are going to have the opportunity to come pick this drivetrain up at the shop for free. I'm in this thing for such a good price, and this particular drivetrain doesn't fit into any of my future plans, so I figure why not let one of you guys have it. I'll have all the details of that later in the video when we announce the giveaway winners from last video. But for now, Fernando, we got more work to do. We got to get the demon and the other Hellcat inside. Let's do it. That obviously turned into quite the ordeal, and that's why just as important as all the body panels we need, all the wiring, the manual conversion parts, is the fact that we're getting the suspension out of this car. I'm almost positive that if we take all the suspension that was good on the Demon and combine it with all the suspension that's still good on that Hellcat over there, then we're going to have ourselves a full rolling car in very short order. This thing uh, have an issue right over here? It's not going anywhere at the moment. It's a flat tire. It's just a flat tire. Nothing to worry about there. I remember this 
touching that at some point during the drive. That depends what way it's rolling. Well, I'm not quite sure how this is possible, but after having that thing in hand for a couple weeks now, I've still seemed to underestimate exactly how intense this project's going to be. Look, we all know this car has major issues. It needs severe bodywork, but this is all manageable. We're going to figure it out. It might be a complete pain. It might take us a little bit. We might have had to spend a lot of money on new equipment and tools, but we're going to get it taken care of. I'm starting to think that regardless of what you see here, no matter how bad you think this is going to be the fix, this isn't the most daunting aspect of this build. I'm starting to think that it's actually going to be the fact that we need to strip this car like I have stripped no car before. I have done a few chassis swaps before. It's generally not that bad. You might think, oh, we'll take that interior, put it in that car. It'll take us a day. No big deal. The problem we have is I've never swapped anything into a chassis that looks like this. For all intents and purposes, we're building a brand new car from scratch. So when I say we need every bit of this interior, I mean every single bolt, bracket, piece of hardware. We're going to need every single wiring harness. We're going to need every single retaining clip like that. This is going to end up being so much more than your typical chassis swap. The one single part we don't need from the interior, those guys right there, the black leather seats you saw me remove earlier. Those seats are by no means meant, but they're still nice enough that they're going to pull about three grand. Couple that with the fact that I definitely don't need a rear seat for this car, and I chose to go with these ones instead. This set's been sitting around the shop for quite some time now, and despite how they look at the current moment, they're actually in pretty phenomenal shape. The only reason they're disassembled like this is that this one over here had blown an airbag previously. We're obviously going to have to change up the upholstery. We're not putting a Hellcat logo seat in a Demon, so I figured it made more sense to do that to the less original set of seats. It also just so happens that we didn't have a matching rear set to go with those, and unlike this guy, we're going to spec this car with power and weight reduction in mind, as funny as that might sound for a Hellcat. Sorry, I meant Demon. Quite a few of you guys have mentioned this in the comments, but this is one of the weirder spec demons that I've ever seen. Back in 2018, if you were to have bought a demon as base as base gets, I mean not a single option selected, that was only going to come with a driver's seat. But don't worry guys, your wife, your friend, they're not out of luck. For the low, low price of one single dollar, you can add yourself a passenger seat. Now there might not be much of it left, but judging by that rear metal frame back there, I'm also guessing that they opted for the one dollar rear seat. You know, I get it. You spend a hundred grand on a chat. Challenger, you want to take your buddies out. Maybe you have kids, you want to throw them in the back seat as well. And I mean, for two bucks, I think that's a worthy investment. That's where things get a little weird. If you were to option your demon with a big old hole in the roof like this guy, that's going to cost you a little more than a dollar. In fact, that's going to set you back a whopping five grand. One of my absolute requirements in looking for a donor is that it was a hard top car. As best we can, I'm going to try to make this car as light as possible. Yes, I know, it's still going to be a boat. I can hear the jokes now, but we're going for a sleek center console, not a houseboat. Vessel talk aside, there's so much to accomplish on this project. We're talking interior, we're talking seats, we're talking roofs, but the only way I see us knocking out this project in a manner that somewhat resembles efficient is just picking an area of focus and knocking it out. Yeah, yeah, there's that. So I'm thinking the first thing we do is get new suspension in the car. Let's make it roll, let's make it steer, and let's get it off this cart. We obviously already have our steering set up ready to come out. The only thing left to do now is get this baby on the lift, get working on it, and get ourselves a fresh new set of suspension. It is bright and early Monday morning. Well, I guess it's not technically bright out yet, but it is early and I think we're ready to drop this engine and diff subframe suspension all down as one. Somewhat unsurprisingly, this has taken way longer than it should. We've had to be so careful in this car because we need everything. Oh, there we go. Why are you making sounds, Fernando? Are you scared? I, yes. What's going on? That was concerning. No, it's not concerning. Well. Sometimes engines and transmissions just fall out of cars. You should know this by now. <laughs> it's time for everybody's favorite game, What Do We Forget? I obviously forgot something because I always do. I don't know what it is or else I would have disconnected it. Fernando, what's your guess? Let's hear it. Steering shaft. 
No. No? Is no, it, is I got it? that. Okay. I think I got that. <laughs> I told you. Keep going. All right, hold. Oh, 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 oh. This is twisting. I was complaining about it in the Demon. Yeah. And then I still forgot about it on the Hellcat. Okay, fuel filler neck. Fuel filler neck out. All right. Now I actually think we're ready. So whoever guessed fuel filler neck, good job. There is something weird going around the shop about how I spent the last three hours, you know, dismantling the interior. I don't know where that stuff comes from. Now this is Fernando's word. I didn't hear this specifically, but apparently somebody said that I forgot to disconnect the e-brake cable off the back. And instead of doing it that way, which is the easy way, I uh, dismantled the interior and did it from the inside, which don't know where this stuff starts. If you heard it, don't believe it. All we forgot is the fuel filler neck. <laughs> Look at that. Easy removal, no big deal. Definitely didn't forget anything. Fernando, we'll go grab a late lunch. Let's go. Now as for what's next, the engine, we're gonna sell that. We're not worried about that right now. The transmission, that's going into hibernation. We're gonna sit on that for a little bit until we actually need it. What we need right now is that subframe beneath it. Now, unfortunately, I don't think this front end is gonna be as plug and play as I'd originally hoped. One thing I overlooked when I bought this car, this guy right here. Come to find out as far as the Hellcat Challengers go, only the wide body cars and maybe some of the newer narrow bodies had electric steering. Now that is gonna put us in kind of a weird spot. In this car, we have the manual chassis harness. We have pretty much all the wiring we need, though it's significantly different than the electric steering cars. So at this point, our options are, do we just convert the Demon to hydraulic steering? It's no big deal. It's not like the car is gonna be original anyway. What would it hurt? Only problem is I genuinely prefer electric steering. So that brings us to the next option. We use all all the manual stuff, all the interior, everything else we could possibly use out of this car, but buy another donor electric steering car. Ideally from the jump, I'd love to find a manual Hellcat with a Y body. It would have been electric steering, it would have been pretty much everything we needed, but they're super, super rare. So if there's a positive to this whole steering fiasco, it's that we got the hard part out of the way, we got a manual donor. Now we can just pick up one of the hundreds of wide body auto cars. And while it may seem excessive to be buying all these donor cars just to complete this demon, we'd pretty much be doing it anyway for the parts business. So I suppose you could technically say we're being economical about this. Is that a good spin on it, Pete? I guess. Now in the rear, it's a little bit better of a situation. That whole thing, it just goes straight up into the Demon. We have the diff we need. There's no damage back here. It's a 370 rear, and that's exactly what I wanted for this whole project. Now that we got both our subframes out, at least for today, we're done with that guy. We're not going to put it too far away, though, because in very short order, we have to get it back over here and get the roof off of it. Truthfully, I did want to do it on this episode, but we have some sick glass tools on the way that's going to let us get our own glass out. That way we can stop blowing so much money on glass removal on this channel. It was roughly a $1,200 investment, but if it works as advertised, it's gonna let us get this stuff out without breaking it. And then we're gonna have a complete set of OEM glass to go in the Demon. But enough talking about what we're gonna do next episode. Let's get that thing out of here. Let's get the engine off the subframe and let's put in some wrench time on the Demon. Alright, Hellcat is over in purgatory and now is when we get to have some fun. You can see this is that electric rack I was talking about earlier from the Demon. Over here is this skinny, frail little hydraulic rack. I believe the subframes are going to be the same, which unfortunately we can't use the subframe. If you look right there, one of those control arms got ripped out. It's all jacked up. Now, despite the fact that the Demon one was in a fire, it does look like so much of that heat was up high and the subframe itself didn't take any damage. If you watched the first episode, you saw that 90% of the suspension damage was up here on the front driver corner. It got toasty this spring. It did that. I still don't know how that happened. The top hat, it's not top hatting anymore. Of the parts on this corner, the caliper and the rotor received the least heat. These are nice new looking rotors. Also, they're two piece over here on the old Hellcat. That's a one piece rotor. So we're definitely going to try to stick with these rotors 
If I find any burnt seals, or frankly, even if I don't, I am going to go ahead and rebuild this caliper. If it doesn't clean up all the better, I think it's a super cool look. Theoretically, this should be pretty simple, but I have a feeling it's not going to go down like that. But I suppose we're going to cross our fingers and hope it goes as well as this leak down did. Fortunately, the Hellcat Motor A1 tip top shape, that's going to let us recoup a ton of money. And trust me, the way we've been buying Mopars this month, we need to recoup every penny we possibly can. Well, it doesn't seem like the heat shield did its job too well. So we are not nearly as far in as I'd like to be. We've already found more damage, not to mention I found out that there's a ton more different with the Demon suspension. You heard me mention earlier that I wanted to keep these two-piece rotors. I thought it was a nice little upgrade. It turns out that's not the only thing different with the brakes. It's almost embarrassing that I didn't pick this up sooner, but this is your standard Hellcat six piston caliper. This over here, it kind of looks the same, but if you look, it's pretty obvious that it's a four piston caliper. I presume this is to clear the 18 inch wheels that come on the Demon, but you can see they almost look the same. Traditionally, when you have four piston calipers on these cars, they look like this. This is the four piston off the rear of the car. Gotta give it to you, Dodge, you slid that one past me. Now, don't worry guys, we're just getting started on the differences. One thing I did not expect, this sway bar right here. This is the original one off the demon and it is light it definitely got a little heat it's scraped up there i wasn't planning on using it in fact i may or may not have tossed it in the dumpster the sway bar that came off this hellcat subframe looked good to go i was planning on using that until i picked it up and realized it was three times the weight that's when we may or may not have but definitely did hop in this dumpster and retrieve the demon sway bar and that's when I decided it was in my best interest to head up on the computer and look up every single Demon suspension difference. That way we can prevent any alleged further dumpster diving. Our Demon rear sway bar, 19-ish millimeters. Our Hellcat rear sway bar, 22, almost 23 millimeters. So not only are the sway bars smaller, they're also hollow. It's just a much softer overall setup on the car. And of course, they paired it with the springs. And they're something like 20, 30% softer. Now let's keep it rolling. The Demon axles, hub and diff, all demon specific i did already say we're going to put this whole hellcat rear subframe in it and we are still going to do that we're going to swap the springs we're going to put the demon sway bar on there but otherwise we're sticking the whole thing in one other thing we are going to swap out though is these rotors i don't believe these rotors or calipers are any different the ones on the demon just happen to be in way better shape so the rear we're settled on that we're going to be good to go after a little bit of swapping stuff around as for the front this is where things once again get complicated and go downhill slightly. I just found that. Now, is this going to preclude us from using it? I don't know. It's not that bad. Everything still slid out as it should, though it did give me a little bit of trouble. I truly do hate to operate this way. I think we're going to go ahead and throw this one in for the time being. And then when a perfect one comes along in another car we buy, we'll swap it out then. One other minor thing that's not going to be settled today, the front springs. If any of you guys happen to know somebody with a set of Demon OEM front springs, I'm all ears. I think it goes without saying that we can't use that coiled up little thing right there. And I do suppose now is the proper time to plug the fact that I will buy any OEM Demon part that you guys might have laying around. Well, team, before you sit two subframes loaded and finally ready to go into the Demon, but stop me if you've heard this before, things didn't go according to plan. I had every intention to take these Demon Brimbos, stick them on the Hellcat subframe, and put them up in the car. I mean, they're in better shape, they're lower mileage, cosmetically they look nicer, right? Well, wrong. While the caliper's not in that bad of shape, something did ding the crossover tube there. It's pushed that way pretty significantly. 
we can order those separately. We'll definitely do that, but I don't need anything else holding us up from getting that subframe in the car. All right, so the caliper got hit. We can still use the rotors. They look better. Unfortunately, also wrong. This one here, something got into it. There's a nice little chip there. Right there, it's ground down about a millimeter that you can't really see it. We'll order a crossover tube for that, order a replacement rotor, stick them in that bin right there, and these will be the Brembos that ultimately end up on that Red Eye project. Before we get out of here tonight, we do have to break the rest of this demon rear subframe down. We're going to hold on to the rear subframe for a special project. That good set of suspension there, that'll get sold. All this stuff over here is going straight into the trash. Remember, we do have a broken axle there. The strut, it looks kind of straight, but I don't really trust it. All the control arms there are just jacked. And of course, the demon diff here will get sold. And now guys, it's confession time. Today sucked. It didn't go at all like I hoped it would. I 100% anticipated having this car down on the ground, rolling out the door without an issue. Obviously, it didn't work out like that. Today was just full of surprises and not the good kind, but as I'm sure most of you guys know, that's just how it is in the car world, especially when you're working with something like that. You guys already know how yesterday went. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Today, we're here with a fresh slate, rear subframe ready to go, front subframe ready to go. I think today's gonna go much smoother and I think overnight I figured out the issue. I finally understand why yesterday sucked so bad. I think one of the keys to the engine video going so well is we did some giveaways. We built up some good karma. As I was cleaning up yesterday I went by and found a couple um I almost said nice parts but they're not nice. They're not nice at all actually. A couple cool parts that we can give away. That looks awesome. <laughs> The spring? Yeah. I'm not going to lie, Fernando, this was really hard to not keep myself and throw in the wall of shame. I really wanted to, but I think I really need the good luck today, so we're going to go ahead and give it away. For this one, as always, I hate Nissan Jukes down in the comments. Next up, the cutoff steering shaft slash coupler, which I probably shouldn't give away before. I'm sure I don't need it, but you know, I already mentioned it, so I guess we're going to do it. Fernando, what do they got to say for this one? Banana? But... <laughs> All right, not bad, Fernando. I'll give it to you. You got to put banana in the comments to win this cutoff steering shaft. And of course, on the topic of shafts, there's the cutoff drive shaft. This is the remnants of what's left of that bowed up, bent up, locked up drive shaft off this demon. So if you want something that was attached to that destroyed transmission, you got to put give me the shaft in the comments and I'll send one of you the shaft. You think that's going to do it? Think yes. we'll be good today? Yes. Hopefully that appeases the car guys and gets us through till later in the video when we give away the drivetrain from the red eye and of course announce the winners from last video. <laughs> Some way, somehow, I forgot to take these bad boys off last episode. This is the good one, believe it or not. Now, one other thing I haven't taken off, this guy right here. It kind of mounts the wiper cow panel, but I think it's somewhat structural. And frankly, I'm scared that when I take this off, the chassis is just gonna crumble in on itself. So, fingers crossed. Huh? Okay, now I guess the actual test here is this one gonna line up. What we're essentially doing here is uh, putting the car on a frame machine. The way I see it, if this thing bolts up and lines up, I mean, frame's good as new. Dead on. Dead on. I mean, what would you expect? Dodge Demon quality, baby. Now that we certified the frame, Fernando, I'm going to let you pick front or rear first. What are we doing? Um, rear. Let's do rear. Rear? Every time I see this amount of rubber back here, I'm just impressed. Well, you have to do it better, you know? That actually would make pressure on you. You know what? That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to back down. So, not a b Now, the tank isn't going to be in the car, so that's going to make this a little bit easier. I do have to address this at some point. Everything that the subframe itself is going to cover up, that's no problem. We really don't have anything to address there, so there's no reason this subframe has to come back out whatsoever. but progress still feels really weird on this car. Oh. No, it's just, it's coming off the cart. Oh, okay. I think. Okay. We're pretty good. 
pretty good-ish. <laughs> one down, one to go. I hope this goes just as smooth. I have a feeling the hard part of today is gonna be when we go to put the steering setup in because we finally have to get inside this car, which I am definitely not looking forward to. I think that you got it on the wrong way. What's up? The yeah, front frame is completely he's the wrong way. That'll do it, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, it's been a long week. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. There we are. And while the front might not be permanent progress like the rear, I'm still super stoked about it. We're going to have to pull it back out. There's a few things we obviously have to address, but either way, in just a few minutes, we're going to have four wheels down on the ground. But before we can do that, we have one more thing to address all that junk right there. I'm thinking the easiest way to go about this is pull this column out with the dash bar because it's practically melted together. We'll stick our new dash bar in there. Hopefully it fits. That's also gonna give us a nice slate to mount our fancy newer used, I suppose, steering column to. Hopefully it goes as smooth as everything else has today. And then who knows, maybe if the rain stops, we'll take her for a spin. In a complete 180 from yesterday, this could not have went better. Not only did we get our steering hooked up there, our dash bar on the inside bolted up without issue. And honestly, that's not even the best thing we uncovered today. When I pulled the old dash bar and steering column out, I ended up going a little overboard. I cleared out a lot more than I had originally anticipated from back there on the firewall. I can't even express to you guys how happy I was to see all that fresh red paint underneath there. Not only that, but as I was prying stuff back, it's starting to seem like all the plastic on here, all the carpet that's still stuck to the floor acted like insulation. I think the floor in the lower frame sections received a lot less heat than I originally thought. Where we were running into issues removing this old dash bar here is there was so much plastic and rubber and everything just melted down on top of it that even once it was unbolted, it didn't want to come. We had to get a little forceful with it and cut it into like five pieces. But either way, while we still have a massive mess to clean up in here next episode, I am 10 times more confident than I was going into today. And I feel like there's only one way to celebrate such a successful day. And that's of course with a brand new set of wheels and tires. Last episode, we got one single brand new wheel from Dodge. We sent the other three off to Alloy Wheel Repair. They took care of those. But of course, that was the easy part where things really got complicated is when we tried to find tires. From the jump, I knew I wasn't going to be able to buy the Demon Logo tires new. They've been discontinued at Dodge forever now. I figured no big deal. We'll go ahead and order the 315 4018s off the new Superstock. It's pretty much the same tire, just no Demon Logo. Well, turns out you can't get those either. Now, lucky for us, this is where one of you guys came and saved the day. A viewer who also has a demon reached out and said, hey, when I bought mine, I stocked up on a set of spare tires. I never ended up using them. So I actually have a brand new, I guess, old stock, you would call it, set of demon logo tires. Needless to say, I jumped on them immediately. Now, as hyped as I am to have these, I think they're gonna look a lot better on the car than they are sitting on that car. You know what? You should put like 22s with a skinny tire, big speakers, you know? What is wrong with you? <laughs> I didn't even realize the SRT logo is still there in the center cap. Check that out. So it's burned, but I mean, it does still have the right logo. Yeah. Definitely leaving yes. it like that. I do have a replacement, but we're not using no. it. Honestly, guys, I did not think we were going to be able to find a set of tires for this car. I know we had some time, but to knock something like this off our list this early is just a huge win. It looks tough, Fernando. That looks good. Given that today was the complete opposite of yesterday, it went amazing. We made a ton of progress, and honestly, it's not even dark out. It didn't take us that long. I suppose the proper way to celebrate is head on over to the other unit and show you guys that red-eye drivetrain that one of you guys are going to own. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are we doing? Go to the other unit. Let's take the whip. The 
Just for all the f***ing haters said I won't be out cruising. Look at me now, doing five miles an hour. You know, no hands on the wheel, kicked back. Said this car would never see the road again. Look at us. As promised, we're giving away this red eye engine. I should have said engine that was in the red eye. Anyway, this is a 2005 5.7 liter V8 out of a Dodge Magnum. It is tested and it is running. I have video proof. How good does it run? How much power does it make? I have no clue. But hey, it's free. Don't complain. Now, does it belong in a car like this? Absolutely not. But if you have an old Dodge truck, if you have, God forbid, a six-cylinder Dodge or even a four-cylinder like one of those SRT4s, maybe you can find a way to put this in it. Hey, it's not going to cost anything. All you need to do is go down in the comments, tell me what you're going to put this in. The only rules are, one, you have to actually own the car. Two, you have to be able to come pick it up from the shop. Now, we are going to work on the honor system, which I realize is a lot to ask of the internet. But if you don't own the car or can't come pick it up, just stick to the other giveaways and leave this to somebody who can actually put it to good use. When I say drivetrain, I mean engine, transmission, and honestly, anything else that happens to be under this. Maybe there's a drive shaft. I don't know. As per usual, in the next Demon video, I'll let you guys know who won that. And who knows, maybe when they come pick it up, they'll end up in a Demon video down the road. And now that we got all of that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm going to leave you off with the winners of the last video's giveaway. I hit that window a little harder than I thought. This thing's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you know you actually was trying to win? Overall, they're not in great shape, but they're still nice enough that they're worth about three. Fuck! God damn it! Fuck you! Piece of shit! Scratch that, we're walking. Gas prices are a mother.